what's going on guys, RBG here bringing you more coverage on the newly announced Transformers Rise of the Beast. Many of you are just as excited as I am to finally see the Maximals and the Predacons make their live action debut. Not to mention see how Paramount brings them more mainstream popularity like they did for the likes of Optimus and Bumblebee. While Michael Bay was a key component to breathing new life into the franchise, Beast Wars was keeping the franchise afloat way before a live action move was even thought of. Like you gotta remember that shortly after G1 ended, the popularity kinda wavered when Hasbro rolled out G2. But thankfully they were able to regain their momentum with Beast Wars, and if you ask me, this movie is a return to true form since Beast Wars was a CG animated show. Yeah, many would argue that the visuals didn't age quite well, but it was a technical marvel at the time and was way ahead of its time at that. And as you can see, CG has continued to evolve and essentially become the main formula in bringing these characters to life. Speaking of CG, we now have information on the team that will be working on the special effects. According to TFW 2005, MPC or Moving Picture Company will be in charge of the CG. There are visual effects in production company headquarter in Soho, London that's managed to expand in multiple facilities across the world. And rightfully so, many of you who have essentially been following the live action films may be concerned about this because Industrial Light and Magic has been Paramount's go-to studio for pretty much every live action TF project. When it comes to visual effects, they're usually at the forefront of a lot of big blockbusters such as the Avengers. So rightfully so, you're probably worried that since this new studio is replacing them, the quality of the CGI might drop for this upcoming project. But MPC is pretty much on the same caliber if not better than ILM in certain areas, one of those areas which includes CG effects on animals. And I think you know where I'm going with this, right? They're the masterminds behind the VFX of movies like the 2017 Jungle Book film and the most recent live action Lion King film. And it's also important to note that they worked on the CGI for Sonic the Hedgehog and had a hand in helping with the effects on Transformers The Last Night. So this won't be the first time they've done work for Paramount on the TF films, and even though it hasn't been shown that ILM will be working on this new project, there's still a chance that they'll be working in tandem with MPC. If they are in fact working on this project, they'll most likely be working on the CGI for the car based Transformers, while MPC works on the Beast Formers. And that's honestly one of the things I'm excited about the most, seeing how realistic the Maximals move while they're in their animal alt modes. Even though the 2019 Lion King movie didn't really capture the charisma or expressions of the characters from the original film, it more than made up for it with its attention to detail on how each animal should be animated. Like when I saw this movie, I instantly thought what it would be like if that same level of detail was applied to a Beast Wars film. And lo and behold, my dreams have somewhat come true. And this leads me to believe that the Maximals and Predacons will have two different designs for their beast forms. If you remember in the last video, it was revealed that characters like Optimus Primal and Rhinox would feature very rustic steampunk looks in their alt modes, where the fur would look as if it's been peeled off or damaged. Something more akin to the techno organic aesthetic that was seen in Beast Machines. This highly alludes to the fact that the Beast Formers have been on Earth for millions of years and have seen better days. And it kinda had me thinking that the characters wouldn't move as animalistic as I initially thought since they'll most likely look robotic. But considering the fact that MPC puts a lot of time and effort into conveying that sense of realism, I firmly believe we'll see their early days when the Maximals Beast Forms were fully covered in organic looking skin. I know it's a toss up from here, but I'm calling it now. I think that would add a little more variety in terms of the designs, not to mention fans of the toys could potentially get two different types of figures of their favorite characters, one perfectly disguised beast mode and one battle damage beast mode. But anyways, in the last video we went over the robot cast that would be featured in Rise of the Beast, but I didn't really do a deep dive in regards to the overall story and humans that would be involved. I felt like you guys didn't really want to hear about that particular aspect of the movie, but there are a good majority of you guys who really want to know about those particular details. So I'm going to go more in depth on the plot as well as other details that have just been released. As you all know, Paramount and Hasbro held a Behind Closed Doors event that featured the director Stephen Capel Jr. and Lorenzo Di Bonaventura who will be the executive producer. The movie will star Anthony Ramos who plays Noah. He lives with his family and is a father figure to his little brother. He's an ex-military trying to find his way while he's living with his family. He's very good with electronics and can fix things. So you already get an idea that this is a character that's going to be hands on which is a common element that was used in the Bay films. You want that military component that will give the Transformers support, throw in Nest. And if you want a human that has a decent understanding of Cybertronian technology, you have Cade Yeager and Izzy. 
For better or worse, those are always going to be elements that will always be around as long as the Transformers are on Earth. So take of that what you will. Anyways, they just began filming and Anthony Ramos has been mentioning it in interviews while he's on the set in Montreal, Canada. During one funny interview, he mentioned that he's just now applying for his driver's license at the age of 29. And as you all know, the main human protagonist has to drive these cool looking cars. So you just know he's going to be involved in some high speed action sequences. But moving on, we got the female co-lead, Dominique Fixback, who will be playing Elena, an intelligent worker whose boss takes credit for all of her work as an artifacts researcher. And when you hear the word artifact, you know she's going to be tied to the MacGuffin of the movie and possibly the Beast Formers. With the exception of Bumblebee, every TL film seemed to rely on something that the characters were searching for in hopes of restoring Cybertron. Whether it be the cube, the cube sliver, or the seed, the list goes on and on. If the writers are following the Beast Wars storyline, they could go with the golden disc that played a major role in escalating conflict between the Maximals and Predacons. But anyways, when it comes to the robot Cass's role in the movie, it's still somewhat unclear. We know that Optimus Prime is going to be new to Earth and learning what he's going to be doing there and his relationship to the humans. And it's also been mentioned that him and Optimus Primal will share their perspectives from their leadership. So I'm expecting to see the two play off of each other and throw suggestions on how they can be more effective in leading their respective factions. We've kind of gotten glimpses of that in Beast Wars where we see Primal receive his optimal upgrade after using G1 Optimus' spark. And we've seen Optimus Prime give Primal advice after he obtained the Matrix of Leadership in Power of the Primes. Speaking of that particular series, it's just been revealed that Ron Perlman will be returning to voice Optimus Primal. So this will be his second time voicing him after recently voicing him in Power of the Primes. And I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit disappointed as I'm sure a lot of you are that they didn't get Gary Chalk to reprise his role as the big bot. I'm not sure if it was the voice direction in Power of the Primes, but Ron Perlman's performance left a lot to be desired in their portrayal of the character. And this is coming from someone who's a fan of his work on and off the big screen. And this feels like a similar scenario where fans were adamant about Paramount getting Peter Cullen back to voice Optimus Prime. Some have suggested that it could possibly be because Gary is a Canadian talent and it would probably be a hassle to get him to record. And if that's the case, it doesn't explain why Paramount would break their neck to get Peter Cullen to voice Optimus since he's also a Canadian citizen. It's just weird. I mean, if I recall, they did plan on replacing Peter Cullen as Optimus Prime when Bumblebee was in production, which Cullen confirmed himself in an interview. And I'm pretty sure the entire Beast Wars roster will be recast with more mainstream actors who will add a little more star power to get more casual viewers to watch the movie. Which I guess is fine, like, I was cool with all the other G1 Autobots getting recast since most of the original voice actors have aged or have passed away, but it's a little different for the Beast Wars cast since most of those talents are still active and willing to come back. I guess we'll just have to wait and see where they go with the voice direction. I mean, we have seen other G1 actors such as Frank Welker return to voice Megatron, so maybe somewhere down the line we'll see Gary Chalk and David K reprise their roles. But anyways, I wanted to go a little more in depth on what particular canon this takes place in, because it seems like Paramount and Hasbro have been very uncertain on where they want to take the TL filmverse. When Bumblebee was first revealed, it was highly insinuated that it would take place in the Bayverse. The first trailer used a soundbite of Bobby Bolivia's speech from the 07 film. Film. We saw Sector 7 and even had an original character in the form of young Agent Simmons make a brief appearance. And the director Travis Knight even mentioned that he couldn't bring in certain characters because it would contradict what was already established in the Bay Canon. Which I kind of found that statement to be a contradiction since the whole Bumblebee film stepped all over what was pre-established in those other films. I mean the timeline instantly became a mess when they said B first arrived on Earth in 87 when it was previously revealed that he had been on Earth since World War II in TF5. So if Paramount was trying to make maintain some form of structural integrity to the overall timeline, they failed miserably in doing such. And I'm not trying to harp on if Bumblebee is a reboot or a prequel or not since these movies manage to contradict themselves at every turn. But I know you guys just want to know because there are essentially two parties that are holding out hope. You have that party that's holding out hope that we can just get a reboot and you have the other party who wants to see the Bayverse continuity continue. And Paramount hasn't really done a good job in establishing what they want to do going forward. Like they never answer questions people have in regards to this continuity. So fans are left with the duty of figuring out where exactly these movies stand in the TF Movieverse, which is perfectly fine. I personally like to think that Bumblebee and Rise of the Beast are the start of a new continuity, but occasionally I get reports that the Bayverse is still in full effect and these movies are a part of it. And when I bring it up in videos, I get put in this awkward position because I get a lot of you guys sending me messages telling me to stop calling these films prequels, with some of you even sending me links to old articles that were made when Bumblebee was still in production. Which leads me to say this. 
things have the potential to change. I'm sure the writer's room and Lorenzo de Bonaventura thought long and hard about it, and maybe they thought it would be a better idea not to really confirm it, because they don't want to rock the boat. So whether it's a prequel that will ultimately set up something that will conclude the Unicron story from TF5 is anyone's guess. Now, since we're on the topic of Unicron, I wanted to talk about his possible inclusion in Rise of the Beast. Like I believe I talked about it a little in my last video, but I didn't go fully in depth since it was nothing more than a vague rumor, but apparently this might have a bit of validity to it. I mentioned that if it were indeed true that Unicron would have some part in this film, it would be through Scourge who just so happens to be the main baddie. He was created by Unicron in the original G1 cartoon and is essentially the silver surfer to Unicron's Galactus if you know what I mean. It's been revealed that Scourge will be leading the Terracons who aren't aligned with Autobots, Decepticons, Maximals, nor Predacons. And I totally forgot to bring this up in my last video, but TF's toy enthusiast Proto Man, who was lucky enough to visit the set, mentioned that the Terracons will look quote unquote Unicronian as opposed to Cybertronian. And I'm not sure about you guys, but when I hear the word Unicronian, I instantly think of Unicron, which these guys will most likely be working for. It would be the perfect way to build the character up, and if Paramount wanted to somehow connect this with the Bayverse, they already have the Unicron component in place. I also forgot to mention that Cheetor will be in the film. During his podcast, Proto Man mentioned that he saw a cardboard cutout being used as an interactive stand-in of a character that was yet to be announced, whom he cheekily hinted was an Ultra Gear type character. And if you're a fan of Beast Wars, then you know that word Ultra Gear is an in-universe slang term for cool that was used by Cheetor himself. A few months back, we had gotten an unused concept art for the Maximal Speedster by design artist Rob Wiggins, who was kind enough to come in on one of my videos and sub to the channel, so shout out to him. The concepts were featured on his official art station account, but they mysteriously vanished a couple months ago, so there's a possibility that this design could be used for this film like Optimus Primal's concept was, just slightly revised. But that's all the news I have for you guys today. Just want to give a big thank you to everyone who's been checking out all the videos and hearing my thoughts on these things. I hope you guys will stick around for more because we're just getting started. I still got to do that wish list on robots I want to see in the movies, so be on the lookout for that. But what are your thoughts on today's video? Are you excited about the CG studio that'll be involved? And do you think they'll do a good job on the Maximals and Predacons? And do you feel that Unicron will play a role in this movie? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I asked you to like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback will only help me improve on future content. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it with all your friends and followers on social media. Sharing really makes a difference. But once again, this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. You're